They say good things come in twos. Hey! Grow old along with me, the best is yet to be. More things in life to hot pot. A man who's tired of hot pot is tired of life. Coronation Street's greatest ever partnerships. Sam. It's like salt without vinegar. Have given us twice the laughs. It's like lard without lime. Who needs dumbbells when you've got these? It's like ant without deck. And double the drama. Get hold of your boyfriend, Phyllis. <laughs> Get off. <laughs> Let's see those dazzling smiles. Join me as we celebrate some of the best partnerships in Corrie history. I know you, Stan. Well, the rest can go and rot. Yeah. Ah, oh, did I wake you up, Chuck? Providing comedy on the cobbles for 20 years. Hey, scratch me back, will you? There is no better place to look for one of Coronation Street's most enduring partnerships of all time than Stan and Hilda Ogden. Where's yours? Same place. Right. Oh, well, you know, Stan, there's nobody else on earth that'd let do that for me. I said, play me up, not. Oh, lovely, Tom. Yeah. Right, you give them the best years of your life, and what do you get back? For millions in the 70s and early 80s, the bickering duo were the street. Well, go on, why don't you say something? Sat there like flaming ruby, have you? He was a work shy layabout. Can I have me breakfast? Get it yourself. She had one of the loudest voices on the street. There's no need to be vulgar. Might be your last resort, but it's not mine. Oh, hello. And she'd turn it up to 11 if anyone picked on her Stanley. No. Listen, I'm not sitting here gone after what they've done to you. You'll cause a scene. Too flaming right, I will. Right. I've got a few things to say to certain people in here. You're a bunch of filthy scum, the lot of you. Scum! There's not one of you fit to lick my Stan's boots. Well, I'm not going to say it twice, Hilda. Out. I've just got one thing to say before I go. <laughs> to the lot of you. Get him to take you to a Chinese. Right. Chinese it is. This partnership was made of tough stuff. Oh, it's lovely, Chuck. Just what I've always wanted. You wait till Faircover Langton see this. I'll curl up with jealousy. For years, they tried to prove they were equal to everyone else on the street. But where exactly are you going? The golden mandolin. Isn't it mandarin? That's right. Chinese foreign. Afternoon. <laughs> they just never got it quite right. The kitchen's over there, yeah. and we have us meals in here. But the serving hatch is over there. Because that's a bearing wall. What's a bearing wall? It holds a flaming house up, doesn't it? Oh. Does it? But then, in 76, something to really put the cat amongst the pigeons. There, that is your scenic panorama contrast wall. You see, it gives you what is known as a mural effect. Well, Annie Walker's never had one of them mural walls. That I do know. I really can smell mountains, can't you? I can smell fried bread. Oh, go on, Stan. Have a good look and just tell me if you can't smell mountain. Give us me fried bread, will you? Fingers, Stanley. Let me try to picture it. <laughs> you have all the Alps on one wall. Canadian Rockies. Alps! I get the idea that lake's sloping. Hmm. And you don't find it a teeny bit overpowering? Oh, no. No, the Alps has got a special meaning for me. Ever since the film. Oh, my word, Mrs Ogden. Do you know, dear, I feel just a little giddy. <laughs> Would you mind if I sat facing the other way until I'm acclimatised? <laughs> well, either you're one for the great outdoors or you're not. Miss Alf, I am. Actors Jean Alexander and Bernard Dewins had combined to bring out something special in each other. You know, I was thinking back to when it all began. <laughs> it doesn't seem 30 years, does it? No, it doesn't, Chuck. And, you know, they say the time only passes fast when you're enjoying life. Ah, oh, that's right, they do. Stanley Ogden! Hello, Chuck. Missed me last night. Oh, you oh, ran right now, then. then! And no matter how much Hilda nagged and Stan tried to please... You really think I look spashy? I said so, didn't I? Well, give us a kiss, then. Hey. You heard? Come on, you daft diaper. It is the second honeymoon, you know, not the first. It was clear they needed each other. And we're very much in love. What's that lipstick taste of? Woman, Stanley. Woman. Actor Bernard Ewan struggled with health problems during the early 80s. Of course, I will admit there's times when he gets on my nerves. But then I look at him and I think, 
Well, Chuck, you're no oil painting and you don't bring much money in. But I'd be a lot worse off without you. And when the actor passed away in August 84, it meant we had to say goodbye to Stan. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the scene where Stan's belongings arrived from the hospital created one of the most powerful moments in Corrie history. As we all mourned with Hilda. Don't ask for much, do we? A few wins on the pools would be welcome. Never mind. Been a bus ride, hasn't it? Never mind what they say about you. You're not daft, are you? No, Chuck. <laughs> Stan and Hilda will always be the blueprint for a golden couple in Corrie. Now, Ursula, are you going to kiss me under this mistletoe? I wouldn't kiss you under an anaesthetic. Oh, Mr. Sugdings. Whoa! <laughs> but some of the street's most memorable pairings... Oh, don't talk, love. You'll crack your face. ...were built for comedy. There's no point upsetting her unnecessarily. You rat! What's got into you? I've got to get me pleasure somewhere. It's what you've been getting into, isn't it? Sad and desperate. You should have it tattooed on your forehead. Come back here! Like our next dynamic duo. Alpha male to lone wolf. Come in, please. <laughs> Whose comic fallouts and bromance lovings created the perfect partnership. See you at the finishing line. If you make it. Oh, I'll make it, mate. I'll be there waiting for you. Steve McDonald and his streetcar sidekick, Lloyd Milani. Claire. And when the pair weren't irritating Eileen... Austin Slice! ..they were falling out over women. You've always been my mate's girlfriend. Was that your idea? Trying to get a bit from... It's an unwritten contract. It's a contract which you just tore up. I think he's having a heart attack. My contract says never leave your mates to face the music. Uh, can I come with him? No! Well, my contract says may make sense. Idiot! Well, mine says this! Classic slapstick, their two-hander scenes had us all in stitches. All you need now is a window! No! So it's your fault! Yeah. A space me to kill you! But these boys never stayed cross at each other for long. My brother from another mother. Really do love each other, don't they? Funny you love me that much. Mm. Oh. <laughs> But one of the double act's most memorable moments came in 2009. You're my son's best mate. What you don't know won't hurt him. I feel so naughty. Ah, uh, but you are naughty. You're a very, very bad girl. Lloyd had broken the most sacred of non-written contracts. And I'm not a bad girl. I'm a good girl. Lloyd! And only Corrie could get away with the pure farce that followed. I said I'm busy. The mess I am in, Lloyd. The mess I'm in. <laughs> Can I smell perfume? What? No, I don't think so. You know what? I recognise it. Lloyd. What? It's not Becky, is it? <laughs> of course it's not Becky. Now go. Go and face the music. Hey, these are my mum's keys. Are they? Yeah, she lost them earlier, so where'd you find them? Oh, in the gutter outside Audrey. She must have dropped them there. Well, I'll uh, give them to her. Yeah, good on you. Save me a job. Say hello to her from me. Who? Your mum. What? Why? No reason. 
Hey, it's good job it's not her perfume I can smell, cos put that together with these keys, I might think it's her you're knocking off. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Mother, come out of there with your hands up! Carry on Coronation Street. Come on, kid, let's go for it. I was born between those legs. Uh, yes, we know where it is, thank you. It's an unspoken rule. As soon as I get a little bit of tail, you can't handle it. My mother's not tail. Don't tell him, Steve. She's the best I've had in a long time, and I'm not giving her up because of a big, fat mummy's boy like you. Yes, you tell him, Lloyd. There's only one mummy's boy round here, and that's you! Except that's my mummy! <laughs> Of course, neither the scrapping or the fling lasted long. You're cruising for a bruising. You're needing for a bleeding. You're flirting for a hitting. You're straining for a caning. You're bleating for a beating. You... <laughs> Give it up. No, hang on a minute. No, you lost. I won. Don't cry about it. You're angling for a mangling. <laughs> Coming up, more classic Cory partnerships. Uncle Fred, did it do sex education at Webfield Comp, you know? Get it on stairs. But it did not prepare you for the vagaries of feminine wiles in the real world. What will I do? You look a million dollars. Toodle pip, ladies. Don't wait up for me. Welcome back to our celebration of Cory partnerships. Ah, want a chocky pick? I would love a chocky picky, Mavis. But where there's double the laughs. I wouldn't be the man in her life if Elle had me. You remember them days, eh? I used to warm you up a bit, didn't I? Eh? There's double the trouble. Marry me. And make my life complete. No. I'll get his cold. I have yet begun to fight. It was a light tale, love. Which takes us to a relationship forged in the 80s. Good job, Jack. Nobody to play with. How are you fixed? Corrie's most famous landlady. At your age, love. Not your shoe size. Bold and brassy... <laughs> Bet Lynch. Hey, they're spending a few bob on that pub, aren't they? I don't wish to know that, Jack. And miser Alec Gilroy. He ran the graffiti club on the street. The two started as business rivals. Give us a gin and tonic. It's like the Sahara Desert round here without the rovers. Ice and lemon. We actually grow our own lemons. Well, you could definitely grow your own mushrooms, darling. It's dark enough. So when producers team them together... Another day, another dollar, eh, Alec? Is there any other way to live? We knew this wasn't going to be a run-of-the-mill partnership. You were having me on when you offered to lend me the brass to buy the tenancy of this place, weren't you? No. 12,000 quid. I could let you have it today, if you like. She took him up on his offer, but quickly became unstuck and ran off to Spain to avoid paying him back. Alec chased her out there. Have you, uh, have you ever seen her before? Margaret Thatcher. Does it look like Margaret Thatcher? I don't know if you screw your eyes up and knock a few years off, I suppose. Egg, chips and beans. Long that time no see, eh? Oh, my God. I'm not letting you out of my sight till we've had a very full and frank discussion. The full and frank chat Alec had in mind was a surprising business proposition. So, they're giving you the tenancy. You ought to be the next landlord of the Rovers. Yeah, well, I intend to make it the best little pub in the borough, Bet. Well, I had my chance and I blew it, didn't I? There is a way you could still have somebody else working for you. Me, for instance. And uh, there is a way you could still have the Rovers. What are you on about? If you were the landlord's wife, you could walk back in the place with your head high. Still be Queen of the May. When she said yes, everyone was gobsmacked. And not just at that dress. Do you like a dress? Uh, no, I don't write much, so no. no. me neither. I therefore proclaim that they are husband and wife. The deal was sealed. Well, go on. Kiss me. <laughs> With a less than convincing kiss. Now there was a time. Who needs love anyway? When you've got the Rovers. Rovers return. And she made sure her now husband... Alec! ..knew who the real boss was. He says he's not in. I am disgusted with you. Disgusted. Yes, and I'm disgusted and all. He doesn't like the hot pot. It's terrific, Betty's hot pot. Ask any of the customers. Well, then, we're both disgusted, aren't we? Yes, we are. We'll worry about the hot pot. You go and have your fancy lunch at the Midland. 
despite odd jinks of affection. I'm a forgiven. Well... And the odd marital perk... I'll think about it. We were never really convinced whether the business deal... Get up and stare. <clears throat> I mean, marriage would last. You see this smile? It's not really a smile. It's the lid on a screen. And in 1992... I gather you're planning on putting a manager in there. Bet's loyalty to Alec was finally put to the test. And the fact it's cheese and onion. Alec had been offered a job on a cruise liner. Hey, you do know we've got to get everything packed up yet. He and Bet were to give up the Rovers and move away. Don't you think you'd have been better employed if you'd... I've been to the brewery. I told you I didn't want to go, Alec. I went to ask if I could stop on as manager. We were about to find out whether it was really business or marriage that Bet wanted. You don't come with me tonight, and you'll be announcing an end to our marriage. Bet. <laughs> with their leaving party in full swing... What she said? She's not going. Alec, don't. When they ask you what happened, tell them the truth, won't you? Bet made her choice. The Rovers was her real love, after all. Now then, who's waiting? He doesn't pay me much, but I'm getting plenty of experience. Ashley, what the pickin' am I paying you for? Our next partnership was one of master... With my head for business. Head for business. ..and apprentice. Diddling old ladies, more like. And your enthusiasm will turn this place into a little gold mine. I say a gold mine. A double act that had more in common than first met the eye. I say first met the eye. Come on, Ashley, shift yourself. Foghorn Leghorn Butcher, Fred Elliott. Excellent. Well, you might think so. Boston cajoled his high-pitched nephew, Ashley. If anybody asks what it is, remember, it's someone new, but don't tell them what it is until they've actually had a taste. Hmm, not bad, that. What is it? Reindeer. It's not the lad's fault. His father came from bad stock. Just shut up about me, Dad. It was an ill-advised marriage. At least he wasn't a pervert. Fred did fancy himself a bit of a ladies' man. Oh, dear, what have you done? Aerodynamics, Audrey, quick in and out. Makes you look quite dangerous. <laughs> that guy. But it turned out Ashley had more luck with the women. What's up with you? Get out of road. Not that he was allowed to enjoy it. Writers had a field day coming up with funny scenarios for the duo. Well? And we loved it. Worth going out for? My, uh, worth coming home for. What's he doing here? You've done wonders for me well to live. Look, there's something I've got to tell you. But Corey are great at throwing in a curveball. It's about your uncle Fred and Audrey. You think I don't know about him chasing her? No, Ashley, look... It's about his son. It's right what they said in war. Careless talk costs lives. Oh, Fred, come on. And in 1999, their partnership came under threat after Ashley found out his uncle had a secret son. Thought it might be you. Of course it's me. I want to know what you think you're playing at. I know it's right about you having a son. I ain't being taken for a mug. And I'm sick of your promises. How you'd see me right and how business would be coming to me. I've trained that lad. I've worked on him like an artist, taught him everything he knows about the butchery trade. It's all down to me. If you want someone to do your hard work for you, get your son to do it. They must say something to the lad shouldn't. They know who they are. But what came next... You're right. ..was a twist fit for the silver screen. I've not been frank with you, I admit it. About time. It's very difficult, is this? I have got a son. I knew it. I. It's you. I'm not your Uncle Fred, Ashley. I'm your father. It was a moment that shocked us all. You're my lad, Ashley. And one that would pave the way. Let me be your father. <laughs> for an even stronger partnership.
being father and son. You are all five. Got you up. Only created more comedy. Well, what did you give me for your tea last night? Sausages. Vegetarian sausages. What did you say? I said vegetarian. Keep your voice down. Boy up. We're getting ready to eat him out. Mm. If word gets out, we'll be sure within a week. I said within a week. Well, I'm not a vegetarian. Oh, well, make sure it stops that way. But all good things have to come to an end. So where is Yenny Road? It's always over the road, having a manicure. Must be love. <laughs> Just as Fred was set to wed Bev Unwin, Audrey, the one that got away... What would you have said, Audrey? ..was about to drop a bombshell. Fred, I'd have said yes. She's put me in a terrible situation. Audrey's not right for you. She's a tease. You'll be happy with Beverly for the rest of your life. But on the big day, Fred did a runner. Dad! But Ashley needn't have worried. I'll never forget you. All Fred wanted to do was say goodbye to a lifelong friend. I will certainly never forget you. Be happy. I said, be happy. Little did any of us know that this final farewell... What are you doing? ..would be his last. wasn't without his faults, but we loved him for him. I know I did. And I'll miss them just as much as I'll miss him. Fred's time had come. And with a little nudge, we bid farewell to another classic Corrie couple. Hi, Dad. It's a good job there are always plenty more double acts waiting in the wings. Because my heart belongs on the open road to you. You're kidding! <laughs> very handsome, very Bruce Willis. More like Bruce Forsyth than this get up. Oh, I like the time, the time. But well, we'll have to wait and see. So we might not. Where their stories take us. Coming up, find out how they built their relationships after the emotional reunions in a new long-lost family born without trace special. What happened next?